How do you get success in raw wrestling? I think uh, the biggest thing is advertisement and how you include people. Nowadays, your biggest target audience are going to be the little jobbers. Like, that's the easiest way to get 50. Like, if you rely on the big names, you're probably not good. Like, people might come because they're fighting, but it's also not a guarantee that they're going to show up. What I would do is just advertise, advertise, just advertise all the time. With BPW, there was nothing when I hosted Rampage. There's nothing but advertisement. Uh, even if they were getting buried, I would put the people who were like jobbers and give them opportunities and like fatal four ways against decent people or good people or one on ones or tag teams, whatever it was. Just make sure to include everybody, you know, don't don't always put the same person at the same time. Just don't be scared to try new things, especially if you're a new Fed owner. For existing Fed owners, if you're struggling with attendance, you already have an established brand. So maybe you should just like advertise like with RWR. And you can definitely vouch for this. I was like in everyone's comments, anything real wrestling related was I want you to join RWR. I want you to join Roblox Wrestling Reborn. Are you in or are you out? I had a fucking I had the hoodies made that people wore at the BPW gym. I had a stat or not not a statue, but I had a literal RWR logo in the day and time of the first show as a model right beside the leaderboard, which is what everybody would go to. To see like their kills and stuff right beside of the leaderboard that way people like knew like it was a constant reminder so if you're able to constantly remind everybody then eventually people are going to start coming what inspired you to first create rwr or just in general be involved in host what were your goals first initiated that conversation with either the fed owners or yourself to create rwr and be a part of that fed well with any uh fed i am a part of i always see them as like they're missing a piece like they're almost there and maybe that's a little egotistical but then sometimes i i feel like i can it, this might be a little egotistical but i feel like the feds that i'm helping are missing a piece and i feel like i could be that piece i'll give you an example bpw dylan was doing all the work hosting and i said and he was hosting like two or three shows and i'm like hey man bpw is doing really good and I told him for like months and months, like, hey, man, I do a good job. Just if you let me host, I got it. And he kept telling me no. And, you know, I understood. And eventually the time came and he's like, you know what? Sure. And it worked out. And honestly, anybody who was around for those last three, four months would even tell you my show was definitely the better show. Definitely had the better superstars, storylines, everything. We had a good old time. But BPW ended. I had no control over that uh, with EWE. I felt like it was so close to being number one and had the attendance. Uh, big names were, are, were sort of already going. And I already know that if I go to a Fed, I can get the big names to come anyway. Uh, and it had good production and had great advertisement, great graphic work. Uh, it was really active. It had its own community of people. And so I'm like, you know, and they had just lost the guy who hosted the brand that I was hosting which was the actual owner, but he had left. So I was like, hey, uh, I'll step in here. Uh, I'll do my thing. And although I stopped hosting after a little while, I felt like ex extreme what I did was pretty good, but now impact's going. And so especially if you're a smaller Fed owner, if you don't have like friends who know how to do things, you're going to have to learn how to do it. You're Wait, not going to find any about, or you're going to talk about devs. Devs, any even people do GFX and shit, bro. It's so hard to find without like paying constantly. Like, yeah, you might pay one time for an arena, but then you know maybe you want a pay per view arena. Uh, maybe you want to make it a graphic, match cards, render. You know, you know what I mean. Titles, like you. Not all. Not everybody who starts a Fed. If you're gonna start a Fed, be well prepared. You know, you gotta have connections. You gotta. You gotta know. You. you you just gotta, you just gotta know people. It's really all it is, and I guess that's easier said than done because you know, obviously, I know a lot of people. But can you tell us about a particularly successful event or moment in your history as a a group leader? I'll give you a few. Um, let's see, EWE SummerSlam. EWE SummerSlam was really nice because I felt like uh, it was my first time, like first pay per view. We maxed the fuck out. Uh, it was a really good show, really good matches, really good moments. Uh, overall, just it's a pretty pretty memorable show. Even like for some of the awards stuff, it got like nominated for like pay per view of the year and stuff. 
RWR's first show was pretty good. Uh, let's see. Uh, all the BPW pay-per-views. I'm going to be real. Sometimes I have a terrible memory, so I forget all the names of the pay-per-views. However, like, uh, I can name one. BPW Elimination Chamber was really nice because it was my first pay-per-view hosting there as well. A big moment happened where Collab Ashford beat, I think it was Matt or... I don't Actually, I don't know who it was. He beat somebody in the final two of the chamber to win the BPW Championship which included collab Ashford into the Matt Ashford versus like Damon storyline. And I, you know, we gave us really big opportunities to do stuff with that. Uh, Matt versus Damon was always fun to watch. They would have like five star classics back and they were going every week. Cause they each, they, they, n- neither of them could like, could really like keep a win or like get two in a row. But eventually Matt did. And I'm glad he did. Cause Brutal pedophile, you know, he, he quit our Fed after that, so. How do you measure the success of a group? What do you consider to be a key factor in creating a successful row wrestling group? Uh, if you look at some of the top names today, what do you think makes them the best? I think the key to making a great Fed, or just making a popular Fed, because Feds nowadays don't even have to be good or great anymore to really get attendance, uh, is just advertisement. That's going to be your best friend. Uh, To the people who I think are the best, I don't know. I think me and Vegas are pretty much levels above everybody. Ridge is pretty good. He doesn't wrestle a lot anymore, but even when he does sometimes, he's really good. Um, There are some decent people. Mint doesn't like train or actively wrestle, but he's still probably better than a majority of people. Uh, Uga's doing pretty good. Having his little redemption arc after, you know, he got caught cheating. Uh, Eli is pretty good. Um, Reese is pretty good. Uh, who else? Oh, yeah. Ominous. Ominous is pretty good. Um, but I feel like as far as, like, the top people really go, it's, like, me and Vegas and probably Mint if he came back. And Ridge, Ridge maybe could be there, like, in that group. But outside of those three or four people, I don't think like there's really anybody to compete. But the key to, to becoming the best... Uh, to end the video, could you give any aspiring advice to group hosts looking to create... A, like, what's the one thing that you would want to tell an aspiring group create a, a, a successful role rest? What was the one number one thing, other than advertising, because you're the importance of advertising. Oh, other than advertising, what do you think is the best? If you're gonna make a fed, be prepared... Okay, because you're not going to have everything handed to you, obviously. Like, if you don't want to put in work, just don't make a Fed. But if you're going to make a Fed, don't be fucking lazy.